Good egg folks and welcome to the IT way. My name is Joanne and today we're going to continue with the integration of the radios and this video is especially for troubleshooting. So if you're still in the phase of configuring the radios on the dashboard in the access point in the switch on the MX, go through this video. I'm going to put the link below where you can see all the steps to configure the radios server in the dashboard for these kind of devices. Now, in this video, we're going to go through the different troubleshooting scenarios for, that you can identify or you can find yourself while you are troubleshooting or integrating this radio server into the dashboard for these devices. Here you can see mainly the scenarios that we're going to cover. We're going to go through the different configurations and mismatch that you can find yourself while you're configuring the radio server. It can be the secret password that is incorrect or the devices are not properly configured as the radio's clients. We can go through the certificate problems, even though you have the certificate, if it's expired or not, or if it's not even assigned to the network policy. At the end, we're gonna cover the part of the user credentials because sometimes the user credentials are not correct when you put it into it. And we're gonna see the results and the behavior on the Cisco Meraki dashboard as well. And at the end, I'm gonna mention what is the main difference between the radius put in for the switches of access points just with WPO to Enterprise as when this was splash page because when you have a radius authentication and integration in the SSIDs with the access points you have to be aware of three main points that is completely different with the ones when you handle the 8021x for the access points or the switches so this is going to be very important for you if you are right now configuring or troubleshooting your radio servers this is Comiraki so let's go to the dashboard and the radius and let's see what happens <laughs> So let's start with the troubleshooting sessions for this radio server integration. The first thing that I will do is test my radio server configuration. So I will go to the access control page. I will start with the WPA2 Enterprise. I have my configuration for the radius. So the first thing that we should do is testing. After I start testing, I'm going to see the number of APs that I'm going to have and if it's that test passed or failed. Here I can see that my access point failed to connect to the radius server. So with that information, it looks like my access point is not able to reach out or communicate with the radius server. We're going to do the same test, but now with the switches. In the access policy section, I created my radius server integration. I'm going to do the same process just to verify that it's not our access point. Here, you will do this test with any test credentials that you might have in your radio server. Here, you can see that it's failing as well. So with that information, it looks like it's not just my access point, but my switch as well is not able to authenticate devices through radius. In this case, for troubleshooting purposes, what I would do is I'm going to create a different tab. And I'm going to start a packet capture in the LAN side of the access point while I'm doing the test. And that way I can capture the radius request coming from the IP address of my access point to the radio server. I have to go back and start the test again. Normally since this test is very quick, I do two or three times just to ensure that I have this capture. But regardless of that, when you do this test and it's failing, you should see at least two radius requests coming from the access point during that time. We did it both times, I think it's enough time. So I'm gonna stop the packet capture, I'm gonna open it. When you open the packet capture, what you are looking for is for radius packets. So you can type radius and you will see it. Here, just to confirm that this is our radius request, we can confirm the IP address of the access point. Here it says it's 3.4. We can come here. Here we can see it's 3.4. So that's my access point. And here as well, in the radius attributes, you can see that here, that's the username that you used for testing. It's the same in the duplicate. In the duplicate request as well. So that's the first attempt that we did. 
the first access request and two duplicates. That's how the dashboard is gonna try to reach out to the access to the radio server. And this is the second one with the two duplicates as well. So based on this information, everything points out that the AP and the switch, they are doing their job, but they are not able to get a reply from the radio server. So in this instance, is because either you have something in between these two devices that is blocking the traffic, or the radio server is, doesn't want to reply to these kind of devices. When you're having these kind of issues, my recommendation would be follow the topology that you have on your network. Since this radio server is internally located, you can follow the traffic through the different ports and network devices, so you can take packet captures all the way onto the point where this radio server is connected. If you can see the radio request reaching out to the radio server and there is no reply, then go to the configuration of the radio server and ensure that these IP addresses that the devices are using, the 3.4 from the access point or the one from the switch, it's configuring the radio server as they are able to authenticate or use this radio request to authenticate any client. We can look now into the different scenarios since we know that the MX, the switch, and the wireless MRs are reaching out to the radio server. So we're going to do the test again. Right now we are seeing exactly the same test behavior and the same result coming from the switch, the wireless, and the MX. You're going to see this information saying the switch has failed, it's unreachable, and you know for sure that it's reaching the radius. So in this case, we have to go through the radius logs to see what is going on. Now that we know for sure that the radius client is good. So we're coming here into the radius server. We're going to go to the event viewer. And here we're going to go to the custom views to see if there is anything coming from the NPS server that can help us out to identify the issue. Here you will see, based on the timestamp that when you took uh, the test, you will see these error messages. And that's the important part. It says the access request, the message that were received from this client. So this is my switch when I tried. It says that the message authenticator attribute, it is not valid. So if we go back to the dashboard, the attribute that we use here is just the port and the secret. So if you know that the port is correct, it's most likely that the secret that you're using is not correct. So after checking and ensure that this is the secret that you have to put here, we're going to try again. Correct. So definitely it was the secret that was not correctly put into the field here. That sometimes happens when you mistype the secret or when you have autocorrections in the web browsers that they put it automatically and override all the configuration that you might have here. So ensure that when you put that configuration, that secret, click in show key so you can see the result. And then you can compare that and compare it with the radius logs to ensure that you have the proper secret. We're gonna do a next test with the same credentials to see what is the behavior that we're receiving now. Now we have a different result. Before it was just the radius is unreachable. Now we know that for sure that the radius is reachable and it's replying with something. It's saying that the credentials were incorrect. So we're gonna take a look at that. To confirm that information, what we're going to do is take a packet capture in the switch when we're sending that traffic. And it's the same thing for the access points as well. We're using the switch just for this testing. We're gonna do it two times to have that information. We're gonna stop it. So we don't need like a long packet capture for this. After opening the packet capture, you can just filter for radius traffic. So it's gonna be easier to digest. Here you see the difference between the behaviors of previous packet capture. Previously it was just request all the time and duplicate request. Here we can see the reject. And in the reason of the reject, you can see some information here, the attribute values and the message. So here we know for sure that the reject is being sent from the radius. It means that we're moving forward. The radius is the one that is rejecting this connection. To know for sure, let's go back to the radius logs. Here we can come to the event viewer. Let's go back to the same logs that we were using before. 
And here what it says is that the network policy server denied access to this user. You can see that it's being locked. The user is being locked here with all the information here. So it says that the user attempt to use an authentication method that is not enabled on the matching network policy. That's why this is very important. From the logs or from the results of the dashboard, you can see that it was saying that it was the credentials that were run. But the event viewer is showing you something specifically. It's saying that this specific authentication method is not enabled in the matching network policy. To understand what, what is that about, we have to go to the matching network policy for this network policy server. So we're going to go to the MPS. And what it is talking about is if you go to the different policies here in the network policies, and we're using these three in this case, if you go to the constraints, and if there is an authentication type, you're going to see this error message. In this case, you have to ensure that you have a certificate on place in the server for you to use for authentication between the switch or the access point and the radio server. In this case, based on this Meraki documentation, you can use the PIP and select the server, the certificate that you have on your server. After adding that and applying to it, let's go back to the test that we have in the dashboard. Doing the test again with the same credentials, it shows that now the, the switch is able to access and authenticate any client coming from the port or the access point coming from the wireless SSIDs with the server. So in that moment, when you see these kind of issues, go through the certificate to ensure that it's well configured, is not expired, and ensure that the network policies is attached to that certificate as well. Now we have reached to a place that we know for sure that the radio server is reachable from the switch and the access point. We know that the port is well configured and this is the host IP address and the secret. Also as well, we know that the certificate is working fine. So the last thing that we have to try is the credentials. So I'm assuming that, this, that the credentials are fine. We're gonna try to begin the test. The result that we're receiving here is exactly the same as the previous one. It says that the credentials are not right. We know for sure that this is not completely correct because we saw the previous logs that it was basically the certificate that was having issues. But now let's go back to the Venn viewer for the radius to see what we can identify. In the Venn viewer that you can find here, we can go to the latest events and ensure that this is the one that we care about and the one that we generate doing this test. The same thing as before. Coming here in the event viewer and seeing that the last message or the last event that we can see coming from the radios is that everything was fine and was granted full access. That was the previous event that we had. And now that we're having this error message that the credentials are incorrect, we don't see any event logs. And that's very important. That's what I would like to show it to you. Sometimes when the username or the password is incorrect, sometimes you don't see this here in the event logs. So when you're having this error message and this end, it says that the credentials are incorrect and you are not receiving this error message here, most likely it's something related with either the username or the password that are incorrect. Sometimes as well, you can see here the error message and it clearly is gonna tell you that is the error message coming from the username or the password. But I just want to highlight that, that that happens to me as well. When you're receiving error message coming from the switch, you go to the event log here and you don't see any information, it's most likely because the username and password are incorrect. If you go back to the dashboard and we can generate the same thing, we're going to try to take packet captures just to validate that that traffic is reaching out to the radio server, but the radio server is not logging this in the event viewer. We're going to try and do that. Now we're able to see that it failed. I'm going to open the packet capture so for you to see it. Again, we're going to filter out with radius. And here you're going to see all the request, challenge, request, challenge. So definitely the radius is sending traffic and we're replying. The switch is replying as well, but you don't see any of this in the event viewer of the server. So when that happens, 
most likely is either the username or the password that is incorrect. So if we double check and write that down again, the username and password to ensure that we have the proper one. Here we see that it passed without even doing any change. And if you go back to the radius logs, you can see the information that it was the that the access was granted for this user. Now that we cover all the different auto troubleshooting scenarios, I would like to emphasize this section in the radius, but just for the splash page, because it has a slightly different approach and traffic flow for you to be aware of. The first part that we cover it was with the WPA2 enterprise, it means that when you cover here and put an enterprise with radius server, you will find this radius server field. And all this, as you can see, the host is the server IP address, which is inside of the same network where the AP or the switch lies on. But if we go and configure the splash page, like it is configured in this one, I just put the PSK, the password, and here I select my radio server from the list. Here it is a little bit different because when you see this host, is a public IP address. And these are the three main points that you have to be aware of. As you can see in the topology that I'm showing right now, the radio server should have a public IP address. And that's so because when you connect your wireless device into the access point, the access point is gonna redirect that device to the splash page server coming from the Cisco Meraki cloud. It means that the wireless device is talking directly to the splash page coming from the internet. And when it provides the username and password, then the server is gonna send the radius request from the internet, from the public IP address of the cluster of service coming from the Meraki to your radio server. It means that you have to put the public IP address for your radio servers to be reachable from the internet. Here is the same thing with the port and the secret, and you can do the test. So be aware that when you do that test, the radius request is coming not from your access point, not from your switch, it's coming from the internet. And for you to configure properly the Radius client's IP address, you can go to the firewall info page, try to find the section that is related to the SignOS Plus page. And these are the public IP address that the Cisco Meraki cloud is gonna use to send the Radius request. That's why it's very important. The same part that we cover as the radius client that is misconfigured could happen the same thing here. And all the other troubleshooting session as the bad secret, that the device is unreachable, and the certificate as well. But this is very important coming from the splash page in radius is ensure that the firewall that you have upstream, as you can see in topology, has a port forwarding rule and to your radio server, and the radio server is reachable from any device in the internet. If you would like to put more security onto it, you can put the radio servers or the firewall or the port forwarding, accepting traffic just coming from these subnets of the internet that we know for sure that they are Cisco Meraki splash page servers. And that's how you configure radius integration in the Cisco Meraki dashboard for the access points and the switches. I didn't cover in this video all the traffic flow or different behaviors when you have problems when you have authenticated wireless clients. So we didn't see the wireless packet capture. So I'm gonna cover all that in a different video. So we're gonna see up next. So if you're having issues, even though everything is working fine from the radius test, and then when you have a client associated, we're gonna see in the next video how it looks like and all the different tips and tricks to troubleshoot that aspect. If you encounter any issues like this one that we cover here, or if you have a new issue that we didn't cover, put your comments below. I'm more than happy to help you to continue moving forward. As well, I'm gonna add all the Cisco Meraki documentation to troubleshoot radius integration with the access points and the switches and the security appliances as well. If you have any other parts or any other documentation that you'd like to bring out to the community, feel free to put it in your comments below. If you'd like to continue watching videos like this one, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm going to put more videos on a weekly basis in this channel. And that's how you troubleshoot it in the Meraki way. See you in the next one.